Today we consider topic 2.5.7, define the terms and calculate the values for both gross secondary productivity, GSP, and net secondary productivity, NSP, from given data. So our first definition is the net secondary productivity, gain by consumers in energy or in biomass per unit area per unit time after allowing for losses from respiration what kinds of productivity are shown here and of course we see lots of uh, grass and shrubs of different kinds and those constitute the autotrophs. The autotrophs are the photosynthetic organisms. They're also referred to as the primary producers and they carry out photosynthesis and provide for the organisms that feed upon them which are referred to as the consumers or the heterotrophs. So the heterotrophs are the organisms that feed on the producers, the primary producers. It's not uncommon for us to eliminate the term primary producer because producers are seen as things that carry out photosynthesis and use the sun's energy to provide nutrients for entire ecosystems and everything else feeds off of these producers. But like we mentioned in the previous lesson, cows do provide beef, milk, and lots of food for other organisms, of course, human beings included. And in that sense, we can see them as producers. So therefore, the term secondary productivity arises. But to say that the cow is a secondary producer is not a common term. So it's referred to as a consumer but its growth is referred to as secondary productivity. We look at secondary productivity in terms of the gain by consumers in biomass per unit area per unit time after allowing for losses from respiration. In this farm, suppose we focused simply on four cows in this picture and the four cows were confined to a given area, perhaps an area of one square kilometer of pasture land. And over the course of one year, the cows may have gained in biomass by 50 kilograms. And reviewing our definition once more, the gain by consumers in energy or biomass per unit area per year the unit of time and this would constitute the net secondary productivity the gain by consumers in biomass per unit area per unit time what about the last bit after allowing for respiratory losses. The cows are constantly assimilating nutrients from their food and releasing carbon dioxide and getting energy for their activities. So respiration is ongoing and biomass is constantly being consumed in respiration. So this change that we would quantify is referred to as a net change and it's referred to as the net change because everything that the cow takes in which is its food ingested and takes away from that what it loses in feces and what biomass is consumed in respiration is it pays attention to what's taken into the organism food that is actually taken into these 
blood vessels and tissues and organs and used or assimilated by the organism and it does not consider what was passed out undigested, the fecal loss, and it automatically, by taking the change in mass over the year, takes in the deduction from respiration because the cow carries out respiration and metabolizes or uses energy from food within its cells and that accounts for some loss. So what you end up with at the end of the year is the net secondary productivity or the gain by the consumers, the cows in this case, in biomass per unit area over the year and the loss for respiration is automatically included because that is an ongoing process. Let's consider now the gross secondary productivity. Total gain by consumers in energy or biomass per unit area, per unit time through absorption. So this definition simply focuses on the total uptake of food. And because it only considers what's taken up through absorption and not what's used in respiration, then it means that the gross secondary productivity constitutes the food taken up and what enters the bloodstream and is assimilated or absorbed by the organism. All of that minus what comes out unused in feces. So the gross secondary productivity does not include the loss from respiration. Let's move now to consider the answer to the question posed in our previous lesson. And here we see a mouse inside of a biochamber with carbon dioxide and oxygen sensors to monitor its rate of respiration. And the mouse also has a food supply so we can quantify its food intake over a period of time. So let's do all that and here we've got some numbers. The mass of a mouse, 30 grams. The food it took in for a period of one day, 7 grams. The mass of food consumed in respiration, 2.3 grams. Fecal loss, 4.5 grams. How do we quantify the 2.3 grams listed here as the biomass consumed in respiration? This graph shows that over a period of six minutes in this chamber, there was a certain consumption of oxygen. And based on this change in the volume of oxygen, we were able to quantify the volume of oxygen consumed by the mouse in approximately 24 hours and then using the relationships between the inputs and outputs of respiration it's possible to calculate that that would translate into 2.3 grams of carbon metabolized or used by the cells of the organism to release the energy required. Yes. Let's end now with a discussion that would allow us to apply all of this information to a real-world situation. A farmer estimated that a sheep pasture had a net primary productivity of 5 kilograms per meter squared per year. After two months, he realized that the field was becoming bare and uh, the grass was not able to sustain the, the number of sheep that he wanted to keep. So he decided to determine the amount of grass consumed by a sheep per day. He found the mass of a sheep was 39 kilograms. Over a period of 30 days, he estimated that 70 kilograms of grass was consumed by the sheep. And then he checked the increase in mass of the sheep at the end of the 30 days. And he found that it went up from 39 kilograms to 43 kilograms. He allowed the sheep access to water and collected and weighed all of its solid waste, its fecal mass, and no attempt was made to quantify the water uptake or the water loss. And that was neglected. Fecal mass was estimated at 50 kilograms over the month. Your task 
is to estimate the mass consumed in respiration and to estimate the size of farmland required to sustain a sheep. Our final question goes back uh, to review the last lesson and previous ones and requires you to use the tools and techniques to suggest a method for estimating the above-ground NPP of this pasture.